Did you know that there are 7 billion dancers in the world today? With the number that high, it would make sense to put dance at the forefront, right? Really, everyone is a dancer in their own way, as a form of expression, and you don't need countless hours in the studio to gain this title. But, as many of you know or may have experienced firsthand, the dance department is severely underfunded, as compared to the ones considered core classes. Which is funny if you ask me because dance is the only class that requires your core. But this can be seen just by looking at which schools do not offer or have even cut the fine arts classes. As you can see here, 3% of elementary schools nationwide offer dance and 12% of secondary schools nationwide offer dance. And this is extremely problematic because arts programs for younger children are noted as great investments in the success of a future generation. I mean, who wouldn't want their children to flourish in creativity? The most successful social and emotional learning programs use active forms of learning to teach students and dance is the best one. According to an American for the Arts study, young people with high arts involvement were four times more likely to be recognized for academic achievement. So as an artist, you know, I was once posed with this question, what contemporary ideas or movements are you currently exploring or would you like to explore? And I thought about this for a while, you know, I was thinking about political movements and movements quite literally until I came across an idea that sparked my interest about two years ago. And this was the integration of dance and math in the school setting. As Nellie Maslam, a choreographer, teacher, and student of ballet once said, Dance is the mathematics of the soul. It tells a story and expresses ideas or emotions, but it also has its obvious mathematical links, such as counting steps and shapes that can be formed with your body. To me, this idea was very interesting because it combines the two prominent parts of my life. I started ballet at the age of four and accelerated math in third grade, and my life has evolved around these two for longer than I can count. So when I was younger, my ballet teachers would often make math analogies like draw a circle with your toe as if you're in the sand on the beach or think of this ballet combination like a sequence one degage, two, three degage, four, five degage. Teaching the dance steps like this helped me realize the connections to what I was doing in school and it's almost as if these two disciplines were more alike than I had thought. The goals of integrating math and dance would be to teach students certain math topics in a creative way and to boost confidence in math solving skills or to introduce them to a performing art that they might be good at. I mean, who knows? We might discover a prodigy in the process. So one theory that I came across in researching this was the theory of multiple intelligences proposed by a Harvard psychologist named Howard Gardner. And so, you know, we're taught at an early age that we're bored with this measurable and static intellectual potential. But this theory really goes against that notion, and it suggests that the views on intelligence are confined. Um, so he presented with his theory that people don't just have an intellectual capacity, but many different types of intelligence, including musical, interpersonal, spatial, visual, and linguistic. And so the merging of math and dance in the classroom is ideal because it will ensure that those who have this spatial and visual and kinesthetic intelligences are recognized. And I'm one of those people. Honestly, I find it very difficult sometimes to sit through long lectures without doing hands-on activities. And I know that I'm not alone. So in 2018, a professor at NC State and the director of the Black Box Dance Theater, whom I've worked, I've worked with before in the past, created a modern dance performance that explored math concepts such as topology with NC State students and local community members. The interesting parts of this performance was that it was not just made up of talented premier dancers or smart mathematicians, but it was just made up of people like you and me. And this shows that you do not need to have these titles or be one of those people to gain something from the integration of dance and math. In this video, you can see assistant professor Ty Lidman collaborating with Michelle Pearson of Raleigh's Black Box Dance Theater to create a unique performance that showcases his topology research. So one of the concepts that was explored was the third and fourth dimension. And this resonated with me because my sophomore year, I took calculus three and differential equations through NC State. So I found this very interesting because my class also worked with things such as the third dimension. 
And honestly, I thought this idea of displaying and trying to teach these complex concepts through dance itself was just groundbreaking. Um, and it helped, his project helps the audience visually understand math, not theory. It really interested me because it's something that not most people would think of doing. It's kind of breaking that barrier because integrating math and dance helps people realize that there is more to math than just formula and numbers. And so to show my theory, I asked some friends to participate in an activity and I told them that it would relate to knot theory and line integrals. So first I divided the group into two, mixing with members who are STEM focused and those who are more humanities focused. They were each to grab a hand of someone else in the group, overlapping and intertwining as they please. I then set the timer and told them to make it undone within five minutes. And of course, it was fun for me standing above them and watching this chaos ensue. But soon, the group on the left undid the knot. And this activity to me demonstrates the ideas of path independence, meaning that the choice of any path between two points does not change the value of the line integral. Obviously, we are not calculating line integrals, but you can see that although the path of the intertwined arms was different between the two groups, in the end, they both ended in a big circle. This is one of many activities that can be done in an interdisciplinary curriculum. Now, raise your hand if you think that dance and computer programming has something in common. Okay, so to teach third graders um, how to code, me and a few of my peers decided to start at the very beginning, and we had this assignment called the code dance. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. So I talked to each friend and asked them what dance move they wanted to add to the sequence. One told me a spin, but you know, you can't simply add a spin to the sequence. So I added, I asked her how many spins, which direction, at what speed. And this helped the children understand how specific you need to be when writing a program so that the computer, also known our bodies, will know what to do. And so as you can see here in the end, we had a dance that had a few dabs and even a shoot, which one of them really wanted to do. Um, and after this activity, we filled out a code worksheet. And I think you can guess which part of the assignment resonated with them more, the dancing. So there are quite a few programs at schools that allow this integration of dance into the classroom. And they do this because dance is a low funded area in the school system and having the children move around with learning can help them retain the information better. Some of these programs include basic reading for dance or 360 arts for learning. But as well as straight up programs, there are vast amounts of lesson plans online for teachers who would like to mix up their normal classroom style. So dance has its economic benefits. As well as being a field of employment, it promotes many of the personal qualities that employees, employers recognize as essential in a collaborative, adaptable workforce. 95% of teachers said that as a result of dancing together, student abilities to co collaborate and cooperate have improved. So there are a handful of necessary elements that encompass the teaching and learning of modern dance, such as space, time, energy, and so forth. And I like, you know, these seven principles when used together can create an infinite amount of possibilities. And I like to think about how classical ballet utilizes a strong sense of lines, which seem to extend towards infinity, utilizing another math concept. Of course, dance can also ease tension and stress, and it gives students who cannot convey learning with traditional pen and paper a way to express their ideas in a new, newfound way. But despite all these benefits, when it comes time to attempt a lesson that incorporates a form of expression, the subjects of history, mathematics, science, and English rarely merge with arts and theater. They're seen as two separate fields that should never collaborate. But I think that dance promotes student engagement understanding, agency, and deep learning in the classroom and will solidify their learning for years to come. It allows students to manipulate their space to tell their stories and visualize their learning, but it also makes the curriculum more memorable. Integration should not be a one-way street and dance cannot just happen in the studios next to instructors. Why should we start interdisciplinary studies when a child reaches college? Why not have it available for children when they walk into elementary school? In the real world, Things are not just divided into these boxes with barriers labeled history and English. These days, it's the sociology of Miley Cyrus, which is a class taught at Skidmore College, or the physics of Star Trek. 
something taught at Santa Clara University. So as we prepare for a world where papers are offset by TED Talks, podcasts, TikToks, and other forms of technology, why not give students another addition to their methods of communication and expression? As someone once said, dance opens up a portal to a new world. And I hope that after listening to this, y'all wanna hop in and explore a place where dance and formal education go hand in hand to break these barriers. Thank you.